First of all, Russia's war of aggression and now war of terror against Ukraine is a tragedy. We said after 1945, never again. And then it happened again in former Yugoslavia. After Srebrenica, we said never again. And then it's happened again on an even larger scale in Mariupol, in Bucha. Uh, the death of Boris Ramanchenko, a man who survived Buchenwald and three other Nazi concentration camps now killed by the Russian bombardment of Kharkiv. So that's the first thing, a tragedy. Secondly, it's a turning point. It's the end of the post-Cold War period. Uh, it's the beginning of a new period, and we have to take stock, revise assumptions that have underlain much of Western policy. For example, the German policy that believed you could only achieve security with Russia, a modernization partnership with Russia. Now it's clear, so long as Vladimir Putin is in the Kremlin, you can only achieve security, European security, from Russia, against Russia. And thirdly, it's an opportunity. It's an opportunity to rethink what our strategy for Europe is for the next 10 to 20 years. In the first 15 years after the end of the Cold War, we had a strategy. It was the enlargement of the West, the consolidation of democracy in East Central Europe. Since about 2007, 2008, the West has been in a state of strategic confusion about its goals in this region. If, as I believe we should, we now firmly commit that Ukraine, a sovereign democratic Ukraine, should be in future a member of the European Union, along with Moldova and Georgia and in time Belarus, which also means the Western Balkans, then we have a whole new strategic agenda for Europe, whole and free, which is both about bringing these countries from the post-Soviet space, helping them to consolidate democracy, but also about restoring democracy in countries like Hungary and Poland, where democracy has been so seriously eroded inside the European Union. So it's a tragedy, it's a turning point, but it's also an opportunity, and we owe it to Europe to seize that opportunity.